3,000 and above. Uh, five golf mic, uh, actually amend altitude, descend and maintain 1, 1,000. Zero, descend and maintain 2,000, I got you loud and clear. In the zone, got 23 seconds deep, we're out loud. Hey guys, so what I'm gonna do today is fly without uh, safe mode. I've done this before, uh, it's a little bit sketchy. I also want to demonstrate to you what it looks like when you use panic recovery. Uh, please excuse the flight, I am still a beginner. And uh, yeah, let's hope there's no crashes. Stability mode, timer start. Yeah, I'm overcorrecting a little bit too much because I'm not used to flying without uh, safe mode on. So uh, it takes a little bit getting used to flying without safe mode. So you'll hear the controller tell you when I'm activating panic recovery and you'll see that it levels out the helicopter quite nicely which obviously helps with a panic situation so I've been practicing quite a bit lately uh, to fly without safe mode um, essentially what safe mode does is it returns the well center of gravity to zero if you uh, put any input into your ailerons. So if I put right stick The helicopter keeps going right Safe mode brings it back to zero um, Which it doesn't do when you are out of safe mode. So Right now I'm flying out of safe mode. I still got my panic recovery button Activated let me show you what that does. So if I go right out of control Panic recovery just levels it out. Panic recovery, there we go. So I'm still learning to fly without safe mode. I've done a lot of flying with safe mode. I enjoy flying with safe mode purely because I'm still a beginner flyer and beginner pilot rather. And if I didn't have safe mode, what you see me doing now is essentially all I would have done ever, is practice hovering really. Um, so it's fun to fly with safe mode on because you can actually fly without having to worry about crashing because the uh, safe mode takes a lot of the stability out of your hands. and stabilizes the helicopter for you the all the small movements that you need to make to steady the helicopter again after you've uh, added input to the aileron What's nice about panic recovery is even if I hold the button in, I'm still able to control the helicopter like that. Um, I think essentially what panic recovery is, for that moment in time, it switches on safe mode, stabilizes the helicopter, give you a chance to gather your thoughts and skill and then try again basically. So as you can see I'm constantly overcorrecting, which is uh, what I'm practicing to try and stop doing. Panic recovery. That was close. The other problem is 
with a small helicopter the wind really pushes it around like like there's no tomorrow it's difficult to control outside of safe mode especially uh, when the wind picks up and really all I'm trying to do out of safe mode is learn how to not overcorrect the entire time. I see that the tail has a little bit of a wag um, when I'm out of safe mode. Um, I'm guessing that's got something to do with uh, I'll have to go and set the gain on the gyro, uh, maybe lower it a little bit so that it uh, doesn't bob like that or wag like that. So tail in, that's fairly easy um, when practicing like this. It's when you start uh, changing orientation that it becomes tricky, especially when you're overcorrecting. Things can get hairy fairly quickly. Okay, so I bumped it up into uh, what they would call Agility 1. It uh, picks up the RPM. Looks like that has steadied out the tail a bit. Um, this doesn't have a mechanical tail. It's got its own brushless motor. I'm guessing with a speed increase in the tail rotor, it's able to resist the push from the wind. That's why the wag goes away. And that's what they would call Agility 2. That's at 100% RPM. It seems a bit more stable uh, this way. I think that might be the, the position for the flight mode to be in when flying out of safe mode. I think with safe mode, the rotor is spinning too slow to uh, push wind through the blades to keep it steady because it's almost like it um, it's much more controllable it doesn't react so severely to stick input that's interesting That's the battery warning. That's a real pain in the butt. Yeah, just bring it down right there. There we go. Okay, okay, I heard you. I Usually I bring it back to the parking lot, but... Uh, yeah, for some reason... It didn't want to respond well. Or maybe those were just stick inputs that weren't uh, responding well. Yeah, seems good. Don't see any issues. Yeah. 
Hey. Hold mode, always important. Oh, that's the beep from the ESC warning me about battery level. Yeah, everything seems good, no damage. Okay guys, until next time. Okay guys, so just a quick recap of what happened there. So the helicopter went into a low power mode or the ESC went into a low power mode. And what that basically does is it reduces the RPM to the motor so that the little bit of power that you do have in the helicopter can be used for you to uh, land safely, which I did in this case. I initially did not realize that it had gone into low power mode. Um, it's not happened to me before where I'm flying out on that field and it goes into low power mode. So, you know, when I was done, when I, after I landed, I was saying, you know, maybe it was stick inputs that was the issue, uh, which it actually wasn't. I'm glad to say it wasn't stick inputs. It was the actual helicopter. Um, with that being said, one thing that I do want to say about safe mode and I just want to be clear is that safe mode is not a foolproof fly out of the box um, feature. You do need some basic training and some basic flying skills to be able to use safe mode. Safe mode will not make the helicopter stay in one spot like with a drone. I have DJI drones and I can take off I can leave it there, I can put the controller down, I can walk away, come back five minutes later, the drone will still be there. This will not happen with safe mode in this helicopter. What I did was I got a little micro helicopter and I practiced my orientation in that. So tail in, tail out, left, right, just so that I can get used to the different orientations when flying. Um, that helped me tremendously. Now, I'm not saying that you need to buy two helicopters to start practicing. You can practice orientation with this 230S. At the time, I was just getting into the hobby and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go to bigger helicopters. And so I bought the 70S and I practiced my orientation with that, enjoyed it very much, got the 230S and I now have a scale 450 which you will see on my channel. That's it guys, just wanted to make sure that I am clear about the safe mode not being an absolute 100% guaranteed fly out of the box feature. That's it from me for today guys, until next time, enjoy the flight.